you are unable to talk to your manager freely the manager is yeah. unable to talk to the vp freely and vp yeah. is unable to talk to the ceo freely just because it's a hobby i don't want quality compromise know what you're trying to accomplish and just make sure it happens and until then don't give up Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of Pitch Cafe podcast. I'm so excited for today's session because I have with me a very dear friend and this friend is dear because he makes me laugh every time I visit his Instagram feed. He is a rage on Instagram and to me he is the dear friend who can diffuse all my stress. But hey, that's not the end of it. He holds an engineering leadership position. He's an investor. He is on the board of many non-profits. He's a champion of the Kannada Kuta local chapter here, growing very popularly throughout the United States. And he is a rage in Bangalore. How can one person be all of this and still have the calm to make you laugh wherever he meets you? So I am talking today about Vinay Bharadwaj, one of my close friends here, also one of the multi-dimensional personalities who is driving the Indo-US, more so the Bangalore, California startup ecosystem. He is not only all of this, but a youth champion. He inspires youth in so many ways. Without further ado, let's bring on Vinay and let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Welcome to Pitch Cafe, Vinay. Welcome to the uh, show today. Thank you, thank you, Vidya. I'm just happy to be part of the youth brigade. That makes me happy <laughs> enough. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just that streak which you made it so much fun that everybody's joined the bandwagon. We'll talk about that and we'll talk about uh, more of it. But before that, you know, when I met you first, when you interviewed me on your Kitak channel, <laughs> so <laughs> right. the name itself made me, uh, you know, laugh. So. I was just so much at ease with you. There's a whole enigma and aura around you. I want to know who is Vinay Bharadwaj. Tell us about your journey from passion to profession. Your passion and profession are both visible. Everybody loves you. Who are you? By the day, uh, you're a tech and business leader, an investor, a hobbyist, viral Instagrammer, a movie maker. You have your own production company. Who are you? You know, what is your journey? Tell us all about yourself. I at least like to believe that I'm more of a guy who is curious. So you bring me anything, I'll be curious about it. And that is what has led to all these things. Like say for example, if I'm talking to you, I'm curious about you. But at the same time, also curious about how do I give the best experience? Like what's the camera that I want to use to that infrastructure level? So that is what keeps me going and I think in all the dimensions, this has really, really helped me. But definitely what has not diluted is that me getting multi-threaded and losing focus on one thing. So as long as there is a problem to solve or as long as there is a destination to achieve, I've been curious, I've been tinkering and then I've been exploring further. Uh, given the fact that there is so much to learn in life and explore from people to technology to all sorts of things, it's never ending, right? So that is what keeps me interested and trying on new projects, taking on new projects. In all, uh, eventually it gets down to how do you improve yourself as a human being or, or as an engineer who creates products, right? Uh, and end of the day, who is an engineer? He is the one who is curious about solving problems, right? In essence, that is who I am. So you are an engineer at heart who is curiously exploring all these domains. In yeah. Silicon Valley, the typical uh, day is you, you know, once once you have a job, you go to work, you come back, you are at home, you have family. This is the split. But for people like you, you have, you know, you're a champion at Kannada Kuta, you're a champion at Shankara Cancer Foundation. You are also uh, having a production company where you make short films, you're making even albums, music albums. You are a theater artist, you have acted in plays, you really put it amazing roles. I have heard you, you know, sing, I've watched your dance to, uh, you know, the traditional songs. These are theatrical performances of the highest grade. You've performed with movie stars on stage. 
so you know i'm talking about jasma odena i really liked your performance in that play so that's what i'm thinking like everybody has 24 hours so you know what makes you feel inspired to become your best self best self is definitely your previous performance that inspires you to do better because you probably screwed up in your previous performance <laughs> so what's critical is uh, to be aware of where you are say for right. example you mentioned about a dance performance right yeah. i cringe at my performances i i feel like oh, i feel like how do yeah. i be better right that's the one thing but uh, most importantly getting back to the original question of hey there is job there is family how do you do these multiple things exactly right? exactly it's only because you have a supporting family just because you are curious and then you are always on the run is your family respectful of that is the critical one and i'm blessed with one of those uh, right then it's people like even like you mentioned kannada kota right everyone is a call away if you need someone for a particular role or sir anything i'm one of those guys who fails to keep in touch with people so many times uh, only only because i'm probably doing something else but when everyone is a call away is willing to help it kind yeah. of motivates you and that is how my theater journey started as well um, yeah. coming from grad school who is doing engineering yeah. if i get the audacity to stage a play two years in bay area it's only because i know your community will come and support you you are capable of uh, selling 400 tickets only because the 400 people are willing to come support you even if it's your first play and that to me is a responsibility when you are taking that kind of money from someone and then bringing them on board you kind of have to give your best right yeah, yeah. and i'm definitely someone who thinks about uh, perfection in terms of quality i am not the one to give you an excuse saying hey this is just a hobby project so settle down for this low quality performance i'm not one of those right not right. that there are many but i'd like to push those and this has been possible only because of my team uh, kitak uh, and everyone there is like that we we're not here to scratch each other's back we are here to be critical of each other's work and uh, the intention is to grow again end of the day it all comes down to that if you have a supporting family and supporting team you won't need anything else i think yeah so that is true uh, when i really like your philosophy you know most hobbies they try out things are iterative but you aim at you aim at the moon right away and that's why you are producing such high quality work i have seen you on so many platforms everywhere the quality is a1 and uh, you know i really enjoyed i can't forget that play jasma odin you played with a very veteran kannada movie artist and you matched up you know the script the delivery the stage uh, choreography everything was to the dot so now i i see where that comes from it's coming from you you are a perfectionist but it's also that you're very appealing and very reachable like you know it, it, there's nothing stern about you <laughs> <laughs> i remember the first podcast i did with i was like so i'm like who's the interviewer how's he going to be and I'm, i saw you and i'm like oh man this is the right set of people everybody on the team were motivating me you know go to the best interview i just want to mention about that jasma odin because you brought it up right and it, it's always a high working with people like that as well eventually it's like a mirror right you react yeah. like how you do like say the team that was producing jasma odin natak yeah. chaitra he always aims at a great quality work the director of that play was uh, b jayashree uh, i think she's padma shri awardee right oh my god such a she's stellar person no minimal oh my god yeah when that person is directing you and when nataka chaitra is the producer of the production house yeah you better qualify to be among such uh, such great people or such yeah. great uh, production houses right that's where uh, you give your best as well yeah i was uh, sitting on the front row and i heard her sing <laughs> you know of, of, in the entire group she was right. so articulate i could tell her voice clearly all the variations and then i saw man vinay is so lucky that he, absolutely and also uh, you you did your best like i came and told you that after the play i waited you were busy i waited for you <laughs> everybody was congratulating you so you know you know based on that let's just help the youth here you're the youth champion and lot of people follow you i follow your work and you are pursuing so many ventures and to all entrepreneurs all entrepreneurs anybody who wants to 
uh, get started on something new like they've never done it in their life but you want to do it for the first time what is the mindset you have i know you talked about curiosity i know you talked about you're a perfectionist and you also said you mirror people if somebody is doing high quality work you join you become a mirror of them but there is something more to you because you're not scared you know if you want to do something new half the people cringe they think and they're like oh man how do i do this i have to come out of my shell so what do you do what's your secret mantra curiosity and performance is one thing we've touched upon one of the things that has changed my approach to work and one of the things that has inspired me or kept me going on to newer ventures is the willingness to finish things that you start if you have a goal to achieve curiosity gets you started no problem a lot of people start and a lot of people even do well at what they're doing but um, it doesn't matter things don't end like a startup if it's a startup there's no end to it there is, you can always exit in itself is not an end to that right if you're pursuing a problem have you solved that problem is the thing i want to mention about this uh, app that i had built early on right to me i think that is the one thing that changed my life early on i was a systems guy i was always a systems guy and i was i was doing drivers and i was more on the firmware and those kind of system software was my thing when i jumped into apps i started doing it and then i kind of uh, didn't complete it it kind of kept bothering me about this and i was thinking to myself that it looks like this is a pattern where i take up projects but i don't finish uh, right this is at the exact same time i was also writing a play that i had not finished <laughs> so it is at that point in time i i just said i just have to finish things and i have to keep a goal to what is the end what is it that i want to do without that i don't start anything this was early on in my career that it has helped me a lot so i was able to push the app out to the app store i was able to complete the play only because i have completed my projects yeah. now i think about what's next uh, kind of a thing right either i th- uh, i do a retrospect on what went on with the previous project or that tells me but there's a lot of learning and hence with everything my only recommendation or suggestion even is see how you finish make sure you finish things that you start by finishing there is no end to a project again know what you're trying to accomplish and just make sure it happens and until then don't give up yeah i know you had so many podcasts as well i remember one yeah. for you know it was startup related there were there are others uh, related to culture then there was one uh, related to uttar karnataka where i come from with right. that particular language with your particular mannerisms you actually put on that character so i'm thinking you're a very creative person i can see how hard it may be to finish something because creative people are always thinking of new things that gives them a high i was just wondering how do you bite the bullet when you have to finish it and not do something new i rate myself more as an engineer than as a creative person uh, because only because i've seen creative people and i'm uh, i'm floored by their ability to be creative uh, right and as an engineer it's a ocd of sorts to finish things for me right and and hence that is where it comes in like from the podcast that you mentioned as well it <clears throat> it is important that like for when i had done a music related podcast and kita wow. that way has done 13 podcasts to be specific wow. and various genre of things and uh, there was things to learn from everything and the intention to start there was also that everyone is driving to work we wanted to offer one show a day which is different during your drive time that was the intention to begin with and every day at some 8:30 am we release this new podcast and that is where it would go so what was important for me then was also the finishing of these things like yes. i had to deliver these podcasts yeah. for what it is and then you don't achieve perfection in the first go you have to evolve you have to learn today what you think of as perfection will not be defined as perfection tomorrow by yourself let alone by others right so achieve what you can achieve today is is what helped me get those podcasts out every day and for as for getting the dialect for the north karnataka dialect i've lived 
equally in both south and north karnataka so it's just me doing that like if i were to do a mangalur karnataka that kannada <laughs> i i wouldn't be able to do that because i haven't lived there i haven't experienced i've had very few friends from that uh, area as well north karnataka and south karnataka has practically been home to me and that's why the dialect so where did you live uh, in north karnataka i know you live in yeah in near uh, bijapur and bagalkot and those were have been the areas where i have uh, lived actually 17 years more in north karnataka than in south karnataka but of course at home i'm from mysore so we speak south karnataka dialect at home and family so that's where the south karnataka kicks in otherwise pretty much i'm a 70% north karnataka guy okay i see that's why how that's why we are connecting subconsciously <laughs> now i know <laughs> all right True. so with that um, one common problem which the millennial generation has which i think you are the perfect person to answer how do you get yourself unstuck and from coming out of this whole i'm feeling bad thing you know i i'm not able to move thing i'm stuck in my life what is your mantra to get unstuck let's say there are two ways to look at it right the if it's an engineering problem to be stuck in that's probably the most beautiful way to be stuck in if you are fixing a bug you're the only one who can solve so yeah. to me that's the best pleasures of engineering uh, right but in general let's say you're blocked by something else there's no room to be sad in one or the other way if you are stuck because of yourself it is an opportunity for you to fix it if you stuck because of someone else or something else which is out of your control it's already out of your control so you kind of compartmentalize things you move on in in certain cases what has happened hiring is one such problem where one feels that they are stuck you can continue with what you have to deliver and then you are always hiring you're always looking for people right when you hire you hire Uh, right that's exactly what it is there is literally no definition of stuck you're always actually making progress the delta might be little right that's all there is to it irrespective of what you think you're stuck in if you carefully observe you are actually making progress just that the progress might be very little which you're not very happy about or if you're tough to acknowledge it too sometimes that's a great advice so basically you're saying keep moving keep making yeah, yeah. keep moving absolutely So I have one question. This is what I think from my perspective. It could be different. If you are moving a lot, I believe you should take a break and take your mind off. So what does Vinay Bharadwaj do to come out of stress, to stop moving, to unwind and get back to moving? What do you do? What keeps you going? Because you are taking really heavy load from many areas even in your passion as a hobbyist as a community a leader in lot of cultural and non cultural areas you even have startups and investment ventures so what is it that you do to take the pause what keeps you going you kind of switch to another thing that annoys you you know if you're working on a vertical you switch to vertical b and you have to mentally reset to get on to b and then when you want to take a break from b go to c right but at the same time even if you are like taking a break to me it is a vertical c that's how i see it right so it, it is all about compartmentalizing for me even when i'm doing something i tend to and I, this is one thing that i talk to my team as well these are called 10 minute vacations right <laughs> within a day so i I'm always on vacation because I had my 10 minute vacation for every 4 hours of something that I've done and in that 10 minute I probably I don't know the music keeps me going or even talking to a friend maybe a family playing with my daughter those kind of things right so you're just doing something else they never like that whole zen idea of let's meditate and get into uh, no thoughts in my head sort of a thing I have never wanted to do that. I haven't even tried doing that. Only because when you can think, why not think? We are blessed with the ability to think. So let's think about what we're doing. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So you have your own way of getting into a state of what you call switch off or reset. Or uh, right. I would say you get into flow. I think flow is a creative high of yeah. a doing or not doing something. So you're you're getting into a state of flow. but you're relaxing that's the thing but the thing is you're relaxed always i have never seen you 
worked up even if i've seen you volunteering backstage where you know things are really crazy but i've not seen you lose your cool i'm waiting i want to see when you <laughs> lose your cool so you you can see that quite uh, heavily when i'm directing uh, when i'm directing a play control too many things to control too many things to control but at the same time i need things in a certain way and and again this comes from the idea of you need things executed in a certain way if things are executed in a certain way you said let's go in the series of events a b and c if it happens then there is no reason to get it worked up uh, right but when when that doesn't happen i'm not talking about rehearsal i'm talking yeah. about execution yes. right Mm-hmm. that's where you need to make sure like you're watching a play you want pinned up silence in there because that's the experience you want to offer but at the same time if there's a kid crying of course you don't allow kids into the play but if something like that happens that is when i'm definitely not uh, not cool and i'm not a calm person at all <laughs> <laughs> okay got gotcha. you by any measure so you know you told us about a um, really good advice 10 minute vacation i'll remember that so very crisp bite which i can you know share with a lot of people so uh, based on that note and also you told you know how and when you lose your calm why why it happens so you kind of know the why now this is all coming from your entertainment and media company and let's let's focus a little bit on that let's switch gears you know from this whole mindset uh, let's move to your business aspect Mm-hmm. So this whole kitak the company you have from which you wrote so many podcasts plays uh, short uh, videos you know i mean it's still i'm still getting surprised you know what was something it did for a client which was unexpected you, know, you didn't expect like it was like wow when i think about this it's really the quality that we offered and like recently a friend of mine told me they worked with us and then they worked with someone else and then comes back and then says you made us get used to quality work mm. right to me that was uh, high because that is exactly what we wanted to offer mm. we wanted to offer good quality products good quality experience uh, right and that's been the only you know, only focus for us irrespective of w- what is it that we do we wanted to make sure we offer high quality because just because it's a hobby i don't want quality compromised uh, and uh, when you hear that from someone else especially who you work with that is a quite a shot in the arm you know and it motivates you to do better and that to me I I hope it reaches scale even when I am not involved even when Kitak is not involved if someone can focus on quality that's a high for me in itself fantastic fantastic so on that note you know I want to talk about what was one of the biggest failures you've had we we talked about all your successes and your mindset your hacks to do things your 10x way your passion for perfectionism what was a one failure which really kind of changed you i know you talked about not being able to complete something but that's not a failure but it's more like mm. uh, something p- perfectionists do they observe themselves and they go on the self exploration and they improve themselves but what was the biggest failure for you which from which you learned a lot i feel this happens in every single project you know there is even when a project is successful there are tiny failures that you lose there is nothing that tells me that this is one massive failure because everything is an experience it has offered and it has molded me into what i am today right so i i wouldn't change a thing about anything in in my life except that everything that i feel that it's all trial and error kind of a thing right uh, at various things that you do you kind of venture into various news uh, per se but you do fail like let's say if you're if you're making an engineering product certain feature doesn't work it works for you on a dev machine but it doesn't work for your customer who's using your app or you who's using your device that to me is a failure and the fact that you didn't foresee that Mm, as a person who thought understood the ecosystem you make a short film it it works for you and then 
once you release the short film you see that it is not working for you anymore not because you are just reanalyzing the product but you are blindsided by project and execution now that you're looking at it you are you are thinking how could i miss this kind of thing right it's like those there are like they say there are uh, tiny wins everywhere there are tiny failures everywhere too it is just that it doesn't matter the size of the failure doesn't matter what you do with the failure is what matters you take a note of it you see how not to repeat it right and make sure you fail again in newer newer ways uh, in in the future that that's all there is to it right so to me failures have been just that mm. i see so it's just the way you look at failure you know sometimes it can just hold you back or sometimes it can be a, like a springboard i think you're a person who takes failure as a springboard or an experience how not to do something and no repeating that's a good way to you know get unstuck and yeah so here's one uh, tough one for you <laughs> what is an insult that you've received you're proud of so yeah it it is a tough one especially when you don't know what is an insult right because the way you see insult is also something that challenges your belief about yourself yeah to me if you think of yourself as uh, uh, at a certain level when someone challenges you there it is perceived as insult in general right but to me it's a reality check if a reality check insults you um it's just a check the result can be true or false if someone told you you're not good at something and this and that uh, then maybe that is the reality mm. so maybe you're not as good as you think you are so there is there must be a quantifiable metric that tells you where you are if there is no such thing uh, otherwise it just becomes an opinion in the end how do you take another person's opinion how do you value it that's where it all boils down to right that's why this is something that i have to kind of even when i write fiction i think about this say a feedback when it comes if someone says that a certain comment is that to be taken as an insult or to be taken as room to improvement mm. you know it's always up to perception so to me i haven't particularly felt the sense of insult uh, per se yeah mm, yeah you know other, other than in a friendly banter where you you actually <laughs> try to insult your friend uh, to, to pull them down yeah i'm the one who does that so we good yeah yeah i know so i think uh, your uh, videos are uh, an amazing way you are pretty daring there was one video you did you kind of saying i don't agree with what the president of the country is doing you are kind of making a, the whole scene humorous but you deliver a very important point in this russia ukraine scenario the strategy you know which biden uh, president biden has followed there's another situation where you're talking about the, the facebook uh, ceo you know mark zuckerberg right. i'm like oh my god i'm actually cracking up this is so funny but this is also a nice message you have an ecosystem where everything is objective and everything is said in such a way it's going to improve things right right humor is one such thing right where you can if you take everything with a dash of humor you just lighten things up you you just loosen things up and yeah. it's only you're tied uh, tied up with something in a certain way at certain times but at the same time it's important to loosen up a little and then see what it is doesn't matter who the guy is if, if it's uh, president or if it's uh, mark zuckerberg i have nothing to lose but i definitely have something to lose if i don't express myself that means i'm um, i'm hiding something myself and forget pre- president uh, on on all of those for for him there are a lot of you know, actually critical people who will criticize him and yeah. uh, that will matter to him and those kind of things unfortunately i'm not in that list of people who matter to him <laughs> or at least that's the sad state he's made me feel that way but with that said i bring it down to your organization uh, your team right where let's say you disagree with what your manager is doing Yeah. The idea is not to insult your manager, uh, right? And this is what I tell to my team as well. Irrespective of what I have done wrong, if you disagree with me, I'd like to be the first one to know. Otherwise, you are not keeping it clear in communication. If you can't tell your manager what's wrong with him or where you disagree with him, then both the parties have failed in setting up a communication channel. 
right to me it's all about that yeah this is tr- important in relationships also very important it's a make or break for lot of relationships how I mean friendships or uh, you know collaborations partnerships personal relationships uh, i think uh, there's a lot to learn from that i always wonder does vinay get it from theater but you're saying it's your engineer uh, at heart i always thought you're a theater person at heart but uh, there is a lot of engineering in that theater person that's what i'm seeing with that i don't want to resist this next question i just popped up what is your engineering philosophy as an engineering leader what is something just close to your heart and if there's a startup out there looking for an engineering leader and they listen to this what is the philosophy you want to share with them to me it's always about communication uh, right and especially in uh, workplace yes the relationships you build on top of trust and uh, communication and stuff but workplace people shy away from communicating uh, honestly yeah. they they somehow are are hesitant you are unable to talk to your manager freely the manager is yeah. unable to talk to the vp freely and vp yeah. is unable to talk to the ceo freely yeah. only because they are hesitant of being fired right yeah. and it comes from top down as much as one wants to establish the other way it's the culture of the company let's say as an engineering leader that's my philosophy as well on engineering leader is just an adapter there yeah. are three pillars in any given company in any given product where they are executing on uh, why and what and how oh, right yeah. mm-hmm. and why is your vision that comes from the ceo or whoever is responsible for the vision of the company and what comes from a little more of spec and product and those kind of things the product engineering uh, or the product managers come into play in, from that perspective on what are we going to do about that vision right and how comes from engineering and they uh, the engineers are going to say how this is going to be implemented how something is possible or how something is not possible right yeah. these are the pillars and the leaders of individual pillars are supposed to be the adapters which act like the communication channel which adapts between three verticals which speak three entirely different languages engineering leaders should be capable of speaking to his engineers in an engineering way that they understand the vision and translate the engineering language back to the product vision and then company and the road map and those kind of things right to me it's that adapter it's like a power adapter but this is the language adapter which translate the languages and make sure everyone is on the same page at any given point in time whether it's a success or not you need to make sure that is where you are and that to me is the single most important thing as an engineering leader fantastic so communication is the core and the essence of your engineering uh, leadership and i i totally agree with you in today's world uh, especially after the pandemic everything is gone virtual and global what the whole business ecosystem is standing on communication and that's like the heart of everything absolutely so th- that's a great philosophy you know i like what you said the three important things first thing uh, you talked about uh, i think the 10 minute vacation you're talking now about your why what how philosophy i think there are lots of gems of wisdom here about moving on uh, truly amazing uh, concepts you know how to get yourself unstuck i can just keep naming but you know we got to <laughs> we got to wrap up the podcast at some point I want to ask you a quick question about your personal life. What do your parents think about you? What does your spouse think about what you do? In their world, what what does your work mean to them? They think I'm scrambling. Uh, they, <laughs> they definitely know that there are tons of things happening. They always wonder why I'm doing so many things. And uh, yeah, they're proud of uh, what I've done in certain areas. Yeah. They know. in certain projects they are not so proud like like my wife is in so proud when i'm politically in, incorrect uh, so yeah no these are the conversations you know and she is a creative person herself so it's always get to good to get those inputs as well so yeah uh, does your daughter think about you ah <laughs> uh, the, the daughter has started to think <laughs> and 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 she thinks i'm too rude oh my gosh <laughs> No that's just a joke where 
we recently made a video and she is four and a half years old wow. and i just made her lines uh, she say her lines and then it was how a indian parent really reprimands maybe all the parents reprimand their kids about uh, social media versus studies but it was a sarcastic take on it so when she saw the final video which she had not seen before when she saw the final video she's like dad you're too rude never ever do that to me again is what she said <laughs> so that's the but, di- okay that's a director you said as, as a director you you feel that so now i see yeah yeah no no that's exactly what it is that is on a lighter note otherwise she's been very fascinating because to me i see that this is the i've always seen a software system as a ai system grow to see mm-hmm. a real human grow and evolve is yeah. fascinating to me there's a lot to learn as an engineer from her as well Yeah. No, no, kids surprise you. They surprise you and they are threshold for creativity. The way kids right. do, they always push us to do something more, uh, you know, amazing. So one last question, Vinay. I really want to be your student today whole day, but I respect your time and in that if there was a billboard where you want anything on it, you know, if you could have a billboard, the Vinay Bharadwaj billboard, what would that be and why? Why would that be? At Kitak, we have a T-shirt, and the T-shirt reads "Keep Calm and Kitak." <laughs> <laughs> okay, what was the reason you picked the word Kitak? Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So it's very common in Canada amongst friends to ask "Ain Kitak Tidya," which is mean what is it that you are achieving in a very slang way. Oh. Uh, what are you crushing what are you crushing what, yeah yeah killing it what are you uh, slaying and all of those kind of things right what did you do so important this weekend like you know when i say hey i couldn't come this day to your party then the friend would say en kitta which is what were you doing right so that's where it comes from and because this started as a weekend project it, yeah. it was all about uh, you know what did we kitta right so that to me any billboard and every billboard should always say uh, keep calm and kitak which is keep yourself calm and keep doing things that you're doing awesome yeah and do it passionately the winner bharadwaj way do it with <laughs> high emphasis to quality give your best don't take anything lightly so you know on that note very very reluctantly i want to close this podcast but i want to make a deal with you before that Uh, you yeah. you're going to do one more podcast with me in canada where we'll totally <laughs> kitak all all issues in the world we'll yeah yeah okay <laughs> absolutely no no this is a pleasure no i've seen the previous episodes as well even without the episodes because i have interacted with you on so many occasions i knew this was going to be a great conversation so always look forward to talking to you whether on camera or off camera so thank you so much vidya thank you vinay awesome have a wonderful day thank you you too